Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Kelvin here. If you are new to this channel, hello! And for everyone else, hey, how you doing? Anyway, after posting that YouTube income video the other day, I realized that you guys like to cable about my stuff. So I figured, why not make a video to show you all my sources of income to let you cable some more. And no, the main purpose of this video is not to show off or how in or anything. I understand that having multiple sources of income is a privilege that not many people have especially when the pandemic is still going around infecting people, especially horny people. The reason I'm doing this video is to show you guys that yes, we can. We have the ability to have multiple sources of income and not rely on our day job and our total investments for income. Basically, it's to inspire you guys lah. So in this video, I will share with you my 7 sources of income. How did I create them? How much do I earn from them? And all the fun stuff. Sounds good? Let's not waste any time and let's start right now. My first source of income is the same as everyone else and is my day job. I have been working as a programmer for 10 years where I copy codes from online and paste them into my compiler to create my programs for my company. True story, I graduated from NUS only knowing 2 or 3 programming languages and because of how fast technology evolves, what you learn today may be obsolete by tomorrow. Like I pick up Flash programming, then Steve Jobs came along and be like, Flash? How about no flash? Then, all of a sudden, flash programmers become useless. All of us are forced to learn a whole new language to stay relevant. Or maybe you learn PHP in school. Then Google be like, PHP? It would be a shame if you come up with a better programming language. Then, all of us had to relearn all over again. So yeah, my day job involves copy and pasting, learning new stuff, debugging codes, and becoming IT support for my parents and auntie. Is my programming job fun? Of course, programming is fun and not stressful at all. In the past, I worked for one of Singapore's game company, helping to create fun games like Social Life and Chrono Clash, which some of you might have played them a few years ago. So for my day job, I can't reveal how much I really earn, but let me give you a range. According to pay scale, the average programmer's pay is around $52,000 a year or around $4,300 a month. I would say this is almost accurate. And as you all know, it is not good to only depend on one source of income. Just in case, one day, you lose your job. Choi, touch wood. That brings me to my second source of income, investment. Whatever money that I have invested is growing over time. Or rather, I hope that it grows, yeah? And that it increases my net worth over the long term. I have started investing since 2016 when I was a wee young lad. So it's around 5 years now. Every month, I will take around $5,000 and just dollar cost average into my investments. I don't really time the market because I'm a noob at timing stunts in LOL and even more noob at timing the market. Instead, I just buy consistently. Market goes up, I buy. Market goes down, I cry a little bit, then I buy more. So what am I investing in? I have a portfolio of 90% stocks and 10% cryptos. My portfolio hasn't changed much since my last portfolio video one year ago. The biggest difference is that I have sold my dividend stocks and only hold US stocks now. And just before you say, wow, you asked me buy dividend stocks and now you sell? You cheat my feelings ah? Don't worry, I didn't sell the dividend stocks because they are bad or anything. Other than first read of course, the dividend stocks which I have sold are still good and stable. In fact, they have been going up since after I sold. I moved to US stocks because US stocks are much better for growth and at the same time, they have higher risk which I'm okay with. So stay tuned as I will show you my updated portfolio in a later video. Third source of income, options. And no, it's not the Wall Street bet style where you buy out of the money options and you pray pray that it goes in the money and you hot big big. No no no, the option style is too risky to me. Instead of buying options, I sell options. Let me show you an example. Tesla is $643 now right? If I'm a Wall Street bets guy, I can buy this Tesla call option to bet that Tesla will reach $750 by Friday. If it reaches $750, the option price will go up and he will earn money. But if it doesn't reach $750, this option will expire worthless and he will lose everything. This option costs $35. So the Wall Street bets guy paid $35 to make this bet. But who did he pay it to? He paid the money to an option seller. In this case, it's a me, Kelvin. When I sell option, I am making a bet with him that Tesla won't reach $750 by Friday. And since I sold an option to him, he has to pay me $35. So I earn $35. In return, if Tesla reaches $750, I have to sell my Tesla share. But if Tesla doesn't reach that price, the option will expire worthless and I get to keep my Tesla share. This option strategy are known as cover call and cash cow put. It is a very good strategy to generate consistent income. If you want to know more, 
I've explained this strategy in several videos, explained until my saliva also dry. Uh. Check it out here if you are interested. So for this option strategy, I'm earning anywhere around 3,000 US dollars to 5,000 US dollars every month, which I have to admit, it is huge. Fourth income source, interest from cash savings account and interest from crypto savings account. Let's talk about my cash savings account first. Yes, I know that the interest from cash savings account is quite low nowadays. It has been dropping like grapes. I put all my 6 months emergency savings and money that's ready for investing into DBS multiplier. Right now, I'm earning around 0.4% on my cash, which works out to be around $3 a month, which makes my use of each up set set. But $3 is still money yo. Now, of course, with $3, I can't afford to buy fish at the Thai fan store. But at the very least, I can buy 2 meat, 1 veggie, Thai fan law. With that being said, I'm considering to move these cash savings elsewhere to earn a bit of higher interest. It might be one of the robo advisors cash savings account like Scythe Cash Plus where I can earn around 1.5%. Okay, as for my crypto savings account, I was putting them in block 5 previously. But after they lower the interest rates, I moved my cryptos to hold the knot. If you want to know more about the platform, I've made a video reviewing it. Holdenot is giving 6.2% for Bitcoin and 6.7% for Ethereum. The total value I'm having in Holdenot is around 10,000 US dollars and I'm earning around $50 worth of cryptos every month. Here's a few things to take note. I understand the saying, not your keys, not your cryptos. By putting my cryptos in Holdenot, I'm risking my cryptos getting stolen or Holdenot closing shop or run away with my cryptos into the sunset. Touchwood, ah. But because it's relatively a small amount, which is just 10% of my portfolio, I'm okay with risking my cryptos to earn 6%. But if let's say it's a much larger amount, maybe $50,000 or $100,000, then I might consider putting them in a cold storage instead. Second thing, you guys have been saying, why not put your cryptos into DeFi? The reason I didn't do that is because I haven't looked into it yet. Let me research a bit more about DeFi first, yeah? Fifth income source, YouTube AdSense. So as you all can see, besides my day job, I'm also a random YouTuber giving non-professional advice on YouTube. I've been working on YouTube since 2020. You might be wondering whether doing YouTube is hard or not. I would say it is not hard at all. There are harder things in the morning, like waking up of course. Anyway, posting videos is not hard at all. All you need to do is just take a phone, film yourself and post on the YouTube. There, you have a YouTube channel now. So simple. But Posting good videos is a different story altogether. Here's why. Each of my videos is around 10 minutes long. Short right? But it takes me about 12 hours to make just one video. Maybe I'm just very bad at making videos or something. I have to research, script, film, edit, upload, write description, add thumbnails, add text, try to answer your comments, and remove those baka scammers in the comment section. The hardest part is actually not all this. I feel the hardest part is to post consistently every week without fail. Check out these stats by TubeBuddy. They found that an average channel that has 1,000 to 10,000 subscribers has posted 152 videos. So if you have posted 10 videos and is wondering why I haven't reached 1,000 subscribers yet, uh -huh, this number will put things in perspective. If you can post videos consistently every week and improve your videos bit by bit, you will stand a good chance to succeed in YouTube. And that's what I did. I started with one video every week without fail. Then along the way, I become more serious and started posting 2 videos every week. So last month in June, I earned around 2,800 Singapore dollars, which to be frank is way lower than a fresh grad's pay. Was it worth it? I think so. It's not so much about the money, but rather it's more about sharing the knowledge with you guys to help you become better at investing and finance. If you want to know more about my YouTube income, I've made a video about it. Check it out here if you are interested. 6 income source, affiliate links. Basically, an affiliate link is where I post a referral link to a service or product. And if you sign up or buy the product using that link, then I get to earn a small commission. The good part about this is that there's no extra work to be done. All I need to do is just post the link down below in the description. And if you want to sign up, you can sign up. But if you don't want to sign up, okay lo. That's okay, it's alright if you are not using my link. But just remember to get the link from your friend to sign up. Otherwise, you'll miss out on all the benefits. Here's the thing about promoting services and products. First, I won't go into every video to tell you to sign up to Tiger Brokers and Mumu to get your free stocks. Link down below. Because yeah, I don't like to do that. Second, I will only promote stuff which I personally trust. Every other day, there are people contacting me, offering me money to help promote their stuff. But I've rejected most of them because it's not about the money. It's about family. And family comes first. I don't promote stuff that I don't trust. 
So, no worries there. Anyway, in June, I earned around $10,000 from affiliate links, which I have to admit is actually quite huge. But I don't expect this amount to be sustainable as the companies can just reduce the commissions anytime. So, I'm working hard to increase the revenue from my YouTube instead. 7 income source sponsorships. So, sponsorships are where people offer you money to talk about their services and products, typically for 30 seconds or 1 minute in the video. I'm sure you came across some of them while watching YouTube videos like Skillshare, ah, Squarespace, ah, NotVPN, ah, and others. All of them didn't sponsor this video at all. Again, same thing like affiliate links. I will only promote stuff that I personally trust. Some influencers were found to be paid to promote cryptos, like Kim Kardashian promoting this Ethereum Met token. Let's check out how it's doing now. Huh, looks like this coin isn't doing so well. Or Nick Carter promoting Safe Moon. Huh, it doesn't look safe and it doesn't look like it's going to the moon either. The name a bit not correct ah. Uh. And because I'm rejecting most sponsorships, I have easily earn lesser $50,000 a year, which I have to admit, those are good money. But that ain't the way. i rather promote stuff that will benefit you guys instead. Anyway, because there's a non-disclosure agreement for this sponsorship, I can't reveal the exact amount to you guys. Otherwise, I will gonna ta piku. But the range is somewhere around $100 to $1,000, which it ain't much, but it's honest work. So that was my 7 sources of income. Some of these are easy to do, like my day job or high interest savings account. Some of them are harder, like YouTube. The key takeaway from all of this is, it is important to have more than one source of income so that you can build wealth much faster and you can achieve financial freedom much earlier. So how many sources of income do you have? Let me know down below. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday and Friday.